Um, Mr. Miller, you have the right to make a statement. It's called allocution. Is there anything you'd like to say to me before I send you? Yes, Your Honor. I would like to take this opportunity to wholeheartedly accept responsibility for the role that I've played in the murder of a human raver. I would like to apologize for my actions, first and foremost, to the family. I'm sincerely sorry for the distress that I've caused you and the devastation I've caused your family. And from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry for your loss. I'm sorry to hear about Paul Graber. Um, I would also like to apologize to the community, to just the ripple effect that, I've, that my actions have had, the, everyone that has affected. I would like to apologize to Noam Graber's church. Um, I know that she was very, I know now that she was a very active member there and, and doing a lot of good things there. Uh, I'd like to apologize for, for what I did and how that affected them. Um, I'd like to apologize to my family. I love you guys so much. And uh, um, I'm really sorry for what I've done and how it's affected you. And I'm planning on getting back out there as soon as I can and make up for the last time. I'd also like to apologize to the Goodale family. I, I'm sorry for the position that Jeremy's in. And I know what I did was wrong, and I accept responsibility for my carelessness, for my ignorance, um, and also I'd like to apologize to the police department and the investigators there for the misinformation I provided back in 2021 uh, to have wild goose chase I ended up there. I'm sorry for that. Coming here today, uh, now at the end of this stretched out journey, I'm, I'm realizing just the magnitude of my actions, and, and I know it's wrong, and I, I knew it was wrong, and, and yet I still carried through, I still did what I did, and I accept responsibility for that, and I apologize to all parties, everyone affected, to my community, to my family, to the Gravers, of course. And I ask that I'm, I'm given a chance and I don't, I don't want to be institutionalized. I don't want to be in so long that I forget about you know, what matters, where I come from, and, and what I need to do. I look, I look forward to, to getting through this. Thank you. Are there any, uh, I know there are victim impact statements, uh, and uh, Mr. Brown or Mr. Moling, how do, how do you want to get those started? So we have 10 of them. Um, knowing that I came from a large and extended family, all of these 10 qualify. I believe they're either um, siblings, in-laws, or um, children. That's where they would all, I think, fit into those categories. So um, several of them are going to be read by Sarah Harms, who is a, uh, the victim witness coordinator in my office. Um, others will be read uh, personally, and there's at least one I know that another family member has been designated to read another family member's uh, statement. So that's kind of generally how we'll approach this. Um, the first up, there'll be two that would be read by Ms. Harms. Uh, Marilyn Foos and then Norbert Foos, who are in laws. Correct. Correct. So um, we'll start with uh, Marilyn first, if that's okay. Please. became her friend if he she wasn't already 
the only exceptions being the two who stole her from the thousands who loved her. She had a way of lighting up the room when she entered. That was because she genuinely cared about every person. People called Noema an angel when they spoke of her. She had more than 50 godchildren, maybe 56, but she didn't broadcast the fact. Instead, she chose to live her love for them and anyone in need without thought of self. She never spoke of her good deeds, but lived the gospel every day with her big, joyful, loving heart. She was a private person in that way, not at all self-seeking, but her personality truly did make everyone feel lighter. When Noema first joined the Graber family, English was tricky. It was hard to understand her speech unless you listen very carefully and patiently. It was difficult to hold a meaningful conversation for those early years, yet she did not give up. Noema mastered the English language to the degree of becoming a full, competent, and indeed exceptional teacher. Her favorite classes surely were with the Spanish students, whom she amused and entranced with tales of her beloved Mexico, all the while teaching them to speak an important language and broaden their understanding of the world's potential for them, if only they would be diligent. Noema loved people. She prayed earnestly for them. She treasured her faith and never gave up her love for God, but instead pressed into him when troubles came. She helped so many, so often, so well. She knew how to love. Noema's husband, my brother Paul, missed her so deeply. I am convinced that hastened his very recent death. We all miss her cheerful voice, her deep throaty belly laugh when something was funny, the way she pursed her lips into an O when she was thinking about the word that was just right. She mercifully forgiving, she was a mercifully forgiving person who did not harbor ill will when wronged, but she did stand up for truth. She tried so hard to help people succeed, whether in their walk with God or in this life. She was an absolute blessing and an angel, for sure. The next statement I'm going to read is from Norbert Fust, who was Noema's brother-in-law. Noema Graber was a very special person that I have had the privilege to know in my lifetime. She was a caring, selfless individual who had the best for those who were struggling and needed care. St. Francis once said, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Noema Graber was the best example of this by her love for her fellow man. After her death, we heard so many stories of her selfless giving with the care of the less fortunate. This was especially true in the Hispanic community who needed help and direction in living in Iowa. Noema and her beloved church was that lighthouse of hope to those who were less privileged and needed a direction and help to succeed. Noema's faith was strong, and this motivated her to care for others. What especially was impressive was her ability to teach others with passion. I have been associated with education for almost 30 years. Many teachers have been great educators but not many educators have a passion for their students themselves. Noema taught with excellence and with a caring attitude for the students themselves, becoming a person they could receive advice from. She knew that life in this world was not easy and you need to work hard and diligently if you want to succeed. The death of Noema has had a profound impact on her immediate family and we believe that this contributed to the untimely death of her husband, Paul. But now we have a situation where three, three children who may someday be married and possibly have children without the ability of having these spouses or children know their parents. 
Plus, they will have to take care of one of their siblings who has special needs. I am confident you have heard what a special individual Noema Graber was. The ability she had to live a life that God was proud of and her selfless acts that is very hard to replace, especially for what she did for the Hispanic community in her area. It is a complete travesty to have two young people take the life of Noema Graber deliberately and away from so many.